just finished my first roll of film in 20 years. It was a lot of fun and I used this camera, Pen F from 1964 to make those images. And I will share my experience and tell you what you might gain if you try film photography, if you have never done it before. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about this camera and film photography, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and also about Olympus gear. But let's start. As I said, I used the legendary Pen F from 1964. I bought this camera about a year ago from eBay, so it's mine. And I'm very proud of having this because this is a very legendary camera. And I will talk about that camera a bit later. But before that, I will talk a bit about how I felt when I was making those images. Because uh, a lot of people say that shooting film is totally different than shooting digital. I have always challenged that opinion because I don't think there is a difference in photography. It doesn't matter what the medium is. It doesn't matter if there is a film or if there is a uh, chip behind the lens. It's still a lens that the light goes through and it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, what do you call a silver or metal oxide silicone that actually records the image. And also a lot of people say that using film is uh, real photography because uh, there is a physical thing when you uh, put a film in and then you expose the film and after that you will uh, have a negative and then you will make a print or you can might have even have a, a slide film which is a a, a bit different thing it, it's a, it is the image but you, you might see a difference in that and if that's uh, what it is then by all means but I honestly do not feel that it is anything different it doesn't matter what the medium is. And for example, when I go to exhibitions, I don't care if the medium is digital or film. The only thing that matters is how I feel about the images and not about the gear. It might be, okay, nice to know, but it's nothing that big that uh, decides if, if images are good or not. That's, that's not nothing to consider when you're making images. There is a lot more things that decide if it's a photograph or not. It's, uh, it's all about stories and all about uh, making a point and not about the actual uh, gear that you're using. That's not important at all. Did you start photography using film or did you start when digital cameras came? Please let me know in the comments down below. Before I tell you and talk about the reasons why you might want to try film photography, let's talk about this beauty first. As I said, this camera is from 1964. Pen F was introduced in 1963 and it was made uh, for the, until 1966. Then came uh, Pen FT and Pen FV. And um, what's unique about uh, this uh, particular F system cameras is that it's a half sized uh, SLR. And yes, also, which is uh, very exciting is that it has a mirror. Yeah, this is a mirror camera, even though it looks like a rangefinder. And the secret is that the mirror is vertically in there. And that's really exciting. And that's how it was possible that uh, the designer Maitani, the legendary Olympus camera designer Maitani, was able to make it so small. And the reason why it's half frame is that at the time when this was introduced, film was really expensive. So you can get 72 images in a 36 uh, film roll and that saved some money. So the photographer could cut the uh, film costs in half. And that was remarkable. And that was the whole idea, having a half frame image on this one. And also the vertical design of this camera means that when you're holding it like this, you're taking a vertical image. And then when you're holding it like this, you make a horizontal image. The default format is vertical, which was of course something unique at the time. And it still is. I don't think there are any, uh, any cameras that are half framed in that sense anymore. You always have the horizontal when, you, when you're using it, when you're using the camera normally. 
And also the shutter is very special. It's a rotary focal plane shutter. And it was made out of titanium, or it is made out of titanium. And uh, they chose, uh, or Maitani wanted to have it as titanium because everything else that he tried to use, any other metal he tried to use was too heavy. And uh, because uh, he could make the shutter, but he could not achieve a fast shutter speed enough for the camera. And uh, finally they had the titanium so thin and so light that the shutter can do one five hundred of a second uh, shutter speed, which is actually quite long and I will talk about that when, when I talk about uh, using the camera and how, how was it when, when I was making images with it. And let's see what else. Um, yeah, then, then about the, the rotary shutter, the focal plane rotary shutter, is that uh, you can use a flash with any shutter speed, which is really good. And that's something that should be in any camera nowadays, but uh, it's not possible because you have the, the two curtain shutters, which uh, always require to have a certain uh, time or sh a long enough shutter speed for the, for the whole image to to catch the flashlight. And that's why this was also unique in that sense. And the shutter speed is selected from the knob in the front, which is actually quite good. And the shutter speed goes from one, fifth, uh, one five hundredths of a second all the way up to one second. And of course, there is also a bulb mode. The film is advanced with the leveler and you have to do two strokes. And you can imagine that when I was shooting, that was the thing that I forgot either I didn't do it at all, or I only did it once. But you have to do it twice. Pen F does not have a light meter. So what I did was uh, use the so-called Sunny 16 rule, which means that your shutter speed equals your ISO, the, the film ISO, of course, in this case, and at F16. So I had a 400 uh, ISO film, and also I used some 100 ISO film the color uh, Kodak Ektar film. And if I want to change the aperture or the shutter speed, then I just change the, uh, the um, what do you call, the um, shutter speed accordingly. So knowing the uh, exposure triangle is very crucial to understand what the Sunny 16 rule means, but it worked perfectly. And there is also a light meter that you can attach to this, but I did not use it because I didn't have a, a battery, as I said already earlier in the video. And um, also you can use a separate light meter if you want. And Olympus made 18 F-mount lenses, all the way from 20 millimeters all the way up to 800 millimeters. And that is quite a quite amount of lenses and a lot of interesting lenses like the 42.5, 1.2, lens and then of course the 800 millimeter f8 lens which was a mirror lens and some of these lenses are really really rare and some are more common but um, then there is um, the um, yeah because it's it's half framed then the crop factor is 1.5 so it's about uh, the crop factor of APS-C sensor and so I had the, the only lens that I have is the 38 millimeter 1.8 lens so it's a roughly 57 58 millimeter lens which is considered to be the standard lens. I think it's a bit too long for for being a standard lens and uh, and then another thing was that the lens selection wasn't really good in that sense that you didn't have really ultra wide angle lenses. You had the 20 millimeter lens which is about a 30 millimeter lens roughly about that. So 30 millimeters was when if we're talking about the, the uh, equivalent to full frame angle of view. So you didn't really have ultra wide angle lenses and that's also a thing in the past you did not have those way back that much because uh, making a wide angle lens is a lot harder than making a standard lens for example that's why most the most likely reason is that there aren't any ultra wide angle lenses for for penf other accessories that they had for penf included for example bellows and then they had the waist level viewfinder and then there was a light meter also it will be attached to the front knob 
I did not use it because uh, actually I forgot to get a battery for it. But as I told you, I used the Sunny 16 rule, which made it a lot easier for me to expose the images. I didn't actually need the light meter at all. But you could use a separate light meter also. Pen F cameras were the most advanced half-framed SLRs. All right, let's next talk about using this camera. And how did I feel about uh, making images with film? Of course, there is a big difference. You cannot see the images right away. And that's maybe the biggest difference for many. For me, that wasn't the biggest thing. And because I don't tend to do chimping that much anyways, uh, and the amount of images that I took is not that much. Because, uh, of course, this has a 36 millimeter film, uh, 36 <laughs> uh, roll film in it, and I can take 72 images with it. And that's a lot for me if I do a photo walk. It doesn't matter if I have a digital camera or if I have a, uh, what do you call a film camera. It doesn't make any difference to me. I, I still take quite, not that many images. Of course, it's a different thing when we talk about, um, okay, and it's wind again. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. Uh, where was I? Yeah, about the uh, commercial work that I do. Then, of course, I shoot a lot more with digital, just in case. So I have a lot more to choose from for the client. But that's totally a different thing. And I think that's a good reason for using digital for your work, unless you want a certain look from your from your images. That, and, and a particular film gives you that. And, of course, it's more wise to use film. But otherwise, uh, I didn't see any, any big differences in, in the way I was making images. The difference came when I got back home. Then I was a bit lost because I couldn't see what I was shooting today. And that was the biggest thing because usually when I get, go back home I upload those images that I just taken and start looking at them. And then I very seldom do anything with the images. I might try a few editing things right after I've taken uh, or, or uploaded the images to my computer. And then uh, I will leave the images for a week or two and then go back to those and then start using them if I'm planning on using them. So in that sense, I don't feel that much different. But to be honest, I, I was a bit lost when I, <laughs> you know, go home with the, with the film roll and uh, can see the images. Of course, I could have uh, 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 developed the films myself if I had used uh, black and white film. Or actually I did, but that's what the C41 uh, development uh, for, for the uh, Ilford Expand uh, XP2 that I, that I used. But if I had some uh, normal black and white film, I could have, you know, developed the film and made the prints. But at the moment I do not have any gear to do that, so I cannot do that. That, that, that could be an option if, if you do a lot of film photography. And to be honest, if you want to really get into film photography, then you should invest in, in darkroom equipment. And now about the camera. What I liked about the camera is that it's, it's really small. And that was the intention of Maitani when he designed the camera. He wanted to have it or being small. And that's how the, the construction that I talked earlier about, the vertical mirror and everything, that makes the camera quite small. And, and uh, Maitani was a big fan of Leica and that's why he wanted to make a rangefinder style camera but uh, he decided to make a SLR. Yeah. Using a very simple camera is actually quite fun. You don't have too many options. What you have is you have the shutter button, you set up the um, uh, exposure, the aperture and the shutter speed. ISO is fixed because you have a film in there, you can change the ISO and then you just fire away. And what I also like about the design is that the viewfinder is on the edge, or quite near to the edge. So, when you're making images, what you can do is that you have your other eye 
for exploring what happens outside the frame and that's really important if you're doing uh, street photography for example which this camera is perfect for the only thing about street photography where it's not that good is that the shutter is really loud as you can hear that is a big noise and that might distract your subject when you're making an image small camera you can you know make a candid portrait but since the uh, or after the shutter has been clicked everybody's looking at you or that's what you think I don't know if that's that drill didn't really happen but but it is loud and that's that's not a good thing and also the shutter button is a bit awkward when it's uh, this uh, kind of like a rectangular shape a round regular shutter button would have been better do you have any vintage cameras that you use or do you have vintage cameras because you're a camera collector or maybe you're not interested in vintage cameras at all please let me know in the comments down below and about the shutter speed that i was talking about one five hundredths of a second is quite long when it's really sunny that's why i have to come back later to shoot some more images because using the sunny 16 rule with this film iso 400 film i used one five hundredths of a second Shutter speed, and as I said, it's too long for bright conditions. And then the reasons about why you should try film photography, if you have never tried it before. The first thing is that it will slow you down. And slowing down uh, makes you think more. You have more time to think. You cannot be really fast with this like you can with digital photography. And this is something that I've always wondered why the digital camera makes us shoot a lot faster and a lot more images okay that a lot more images kind of, it's kind of kind of no-brainer but why do we have to rush because it's the same medium it's the same thing the only thing you have is the sensor instead of a film and, and i don't see any difference why can't you use digitally and think more and that's that's the biggest thing that this will force you the film camera will sh will surely force you to be a lot slower in your image making you you need to think your composition your story your uh, opinion what you want to you know make the images uh, a lot more and that's that's important and that will make you more patient and it will also make you a better photographer and then the second reason which is uh, almost equally important is that with the uh, using film it's a lot of fun i had a lots and lots of fun using this camera because uh, it was something different i tend to like different and new things of course okay new things i've you know been a professional photographer for many many years and i used film for for many many years it's my professional work so it's nothing new to me but it's new for a, for a long long time and that's that's what i liked and i also like the results of these images and that that was the the fun part of, of all and when you're having fun you tend to learn a lot more at, at least i do i don't know if about you but learning should be fun and when you're having fun making images you learn and i think that's those are the two main points you start thinking and also you have more fun but i really think that the first reason that you it will slow you down and you make makes you think more of your images is more important than having fun and when you think about your images before you click the shutter that will make you a better photographer and here is something more for you to watch it's about vintage lenses there's a lot of information about different kinds of vintage lenses and some examples of my vintage lenses but hey thanks for watching and bye for now